What's going on everybody? I've been hearing from a bunch of you that you would like to figure out how do you make a timer inside a Keynote. And so what we're gonna do today is that I'm gonna walk you through two different versions. We're gonna do a super basic one. We're gonna do this version. It's just a simple numerical countdown that you can do in probably about two minutes flat and have a super easy one to be able to do. But maybe you're feeling a little bit more creative. Maybe you wanna do one that's sort of an intermediate difficulty. Well then we're gonna do this one. And this one is gonna be a little bit more animated. It's gonna be a little bit more visual. It's gonna be a little bit more interesting. But they're both gonna be quick. Be able to something you can do extremely easily with the skills we're gonna teach you here and from some of my other videos. So I think we're gonna have some fun and be able to figure out how to quickly make a timer. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Crazy One. As always, I'm your host Steve Gates, and this is the YouTube channel and podcast that helps you figure out how to be more creative, how to be a better leader, be able to give you some career coaching, and in videos like today, how to find some new ways of working with some apps that you probably use all the time. Now, if you want to find out more about the show, if you want to be able to find out more about some of these other videos, you can always just head over to thecrazyone.com. It's the crazy and the number one.com. Now, also, if you stay all the way to the end of this video, I'll be happy to share the URL where you can actually find the working files for what I'm going to do today. So if you want to be able to download those, use them yourselves, use them as a bit of a shortcut, you can do that. But like I said in the intro, what I want to do is I just want to start with a super simple timer, just one that this is literally going to take us probably no more than two minutes to make. So what we're going to do is just go through and do that. Then once we've got that in place, sort of get the basics down, then we're going to move on to a little bit more of an intermediate version. Okay, well, let's jump in back into Keynote and let's make the basic version. Now for starters, if this looks a little bit different, if you notice some of the icons up here look a little bit different than in some of the last videos, that's because this is the new Big Sur version of Keynote. So that's one of the things that's a little bit different in here is you're gonna notice that again, that those shapes are a little bit different, but for any, if anybody's doing it at home, that's the version. But what we're gonna talk about today will work in any version. I'm not gonna use any new functionality or different things like that. So all I'm gonna do for this one is to just to do a basic countdown timer. I thought it'd be easy. We can just sort of start at 15 and go all the way down to zero, be able to just, again, make, you know, have a little bit of a colorful sort of times up. So this is all that I did was I just went in and created 16 slides. So count down to this and then the times up and then just went in and to be able to just put simply the number in here. That's really it, right? Like just centered it up in the middle of that space. And that was pretty much it. So from here, making it is pretty simple, but as usual with Keynote, there is a bit of a wrinkle. So I'm gonna want the same animation on everything. So I'm just gonna go and hit that first one and hold down shift to be able to select all these. You see those turn that sort of little different shade of blue. Now what we're gonna do over here is go to animate and then add an effect. Now I'm thinking probably just keep it simple. Maybe just kind of do like a simple flip. Um, as always, I hate the, hate the bounce, hate the bounce. So let's be able to do that. Now the thing here is gonna be whenever this runs, you don't want to sit there and click every single time, right? Like you don't want to sit there and go 1,001, click, 1,002, click. So what we need to be able to do is here for this start transition to make this automatic. Now, there's going to be two numbers here that matter to make sure that we get this right because these, this to this, needs to be a second apart. So what we need to be able to do is to look at this, which is going to be the duration of that transition, and then what is the delay between the two. This is sometimes a mistake that people make because sometimes what you'll see them do is they'll come in here and they'll set this to one and like, oh, it's going to happen every one second. And then it'll automatically change. What you need to be able to do is to make sure that this and this are both add up to one second because right now each of these slides is lasting for 1.5 seconds. So that's not going to work. So one of the things we could do here is we can take this all the way down to zero and let's test this out and see what that looks like. So that's sort of just like that constant counter. Okay, that that works. That keeps sort of keeps everything moving. We could also shift this around. We can make this 0.5 seconds. So that goes a little bit faster and there's a little bit of a delay. So let's go back to the top and see how that works. So see now there's just a little bit more in there as it bounces. It holds there for just a second longer. So I probably like that a little bit better just for the way that, that that'll work with that. So yeah, I think that's probably pretty good for this version. So let's just go through and make sure 
because it looked like there's a little hesitancy in there. And sometimes if you don't get them all, so we want to do half a second for there and the delay for half a second. So that's all we want to do. And again, you can do different ones if you want to be able to do that. Some are going to work better than others. Others aren't going to work terribly well. Um, like this push could potentially work. This this may make everybody a little seasick. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, see, that that's a little bit too much movement, and it makes it a little bit too hard to see. So not every one of these is going to work quite as well. That's why I said. I mean, the, the flip for me works pretty well. I think probably Object Revolve, this one... Yeah, maybe that one's probably going to be a little... Yeah, see, again, that's going to make everybody seasick. So I would just say on this one, let's just do the flip. And then this is what you're going to end up with that. So again, just simple. Make the slides to be able to do that. goes through simple enough. So, okay, now that we've got this basic one down, now from here what it is we can do is now let's go through and make a little bit more of a complicated one. That was the basic version. Like I said, you can throw one of those together in about two minutes. And the only reason it's going to take longer is if you have some crazy long timer. But it's simple and it's straightforward. Now, what if you want to do something a little more creative, a little bit more imaginative, something that sort of gets people's attention a little bit more? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to do probably a little bit more of an intermediate version. That's going to have a little bit more animation and a little bit more visual punch if you want to do something a little more interesting. Okay, now let's look at this intermediate version that I was talking about. So I think the easiest way to do this is let's start with where we're going to end up. So this is the timer. So again, same idea of just those same 15 slides with the same numbers we did before. So if you did that, hold on to that. That works great. But obviously what we did is we've added in this ticking hand that's going around so that now we get a little bit more of a sense of time. We get a little bit more sense of context to be able to do things like that. Now, what we're going to do with each one of these is so we still have the number we had there before, and there's three elements that I've added. The first one is this outer ring. So again, just simple shape. So if you want to be able to go in to shape, just pull out a circle. All we do for these, oh, leave my guide alone. All we do for this is just take the color fill out, put in a border line, and that's it, right? And then just make it the size that we want, and that's good to go. That's all we did there. So we just did that, laid that around the outside. Now you'll also notice that we have then the hand that's here. So what this is, is this is just, again, a simple line. So go back up, we just get a shape. And whenever we pull that out, what we can do is probably, let's make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. And all this is, is just this simple line. What we've done is change the stroke. So instead of it being solid like that, it's dotted. Oh, sorry, that's dashed. Make it dotted. There we go. Helps when you get it right. Then we went through, changed the color, so it's just this light gray. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that as we go between this, see how that's a round end there and it's a square end there? Just to help emphasize the time difference a little bit, you can change the end point. So here on this end point drop down, you just have a circle on this one, and that's all we did to be able to get that line. So that's it. Now, the only part about this is that if they're just these two shapes, well, then it makes it hard to be able to read these numbers. Now, there's always multiple different ways of doing everything, and I know people always sort of like write in and say, hey, there's other ways of doing stuff. But what we want to be able to do is to mask out so that you can actually read that number. So what we'll do is I'll show you. So there's a, again, there's just a shape hidden in there, which is that there's just a simple black circle. Let me make it a different color so you can see it. And all that that's doing is just obscuring so that this line, right, pretty much right in there, stays away from the 15 and keeps it readable. Now, I do know that you could have made this background smaller behind the type. You can add a fill. So if we did a color fill here, that that would have made it black. The reason why I didn't do that is because the background is a square. And what I want to be able to do is as this moves around, I want that to be able to have more of a circular look. It's just a simple little thing, but I think it makes it just a touch more elegant. It's just, again, it's just one of those simple little things that I always do in my work so that that way, as you can sort of see as it goes around, particularly like here on the corners, this would have been cut way in there. And I don't want that. So there's just so there's three shapes that I've added. This outline circle, the line and then the black circle behind all of this. Now, it just simply becomes a layering. The circle can be wherever it wants, but basically the number needs to be in the front, the black circle behind that, and then the line behind that. As long as you do that, you're all good. Now, from there, all you have to do is to be able to go through and to be able to now move this particular hand all the way around to where we want it to. 
Well, here, let, let's do this just to make the math a little bit easier. So what we have is obviously a circle is 360 degrees. And then out of that, we have that we want to go through and we want to do it in this case across 15 seconds. So what happens is with a little bit of math, whenever you actually take those two and divide 360 15 times, you get 24. So again, sorry, this even if you're a designer, math still matters. So all that we need to do now is between each one of these frames, rotate this 24 degrees and do that again and again and again and basically go all the way through to be able to make it on those multiple different 24 degree rotations because whenever we do that, this is what we're gonna end up with. So all that that is, and here I'll just, I'll copy and paste this one to make it a little bit easier. So as we go from 15 to 14, I have this line and whenever that's selected, if I go into arrange and rotate, what we see here is now this is where it is and we have the angle. And the thing with this is that, you know, what I, you can try to go through and use that, this little circular slider thing here, that to me, unless you're going to do it in 45 or 90 degree increments, which is where you can go through and hold down the shift button. And what you're going to be able to do is just be able to sort of quickly go through and sort of move this, see how that just sort of jumps like that makes it really easy. Anything smaller than that, I go through and type this in. So whenever we go through and do this, if you kind of are doing good at math in your head, this is at 90 degrees. So we want to move it 24, which means it needs to be at 66 degrees. Now you'll also notice what I did is I have these two guidelines that are here. Now these are, and we'll get rid of them just to show you how to remake them. Those are there to tell me where the center of the circle is. So that's an easy one. All you have to do is just click on the circle. And what I do is I use these little dots in the middle for cheats. So now whenever I go in and you just click on that ruler and drag it out, I'm going to put one in the middle of that dot and one in the middle of that dot. Super easy way and cheat for me to know where this is. Because what matters is for this dot, which is the, the bottom of that hand, to line up with the middle of that dot. right? So that's what I want to be able to see, is that this now lines up right on that center. So that's all I have to do is now whenever I do this, this goes from there to there, works great. And that's all I have to do is just keep doing that again and again, get out a calculator if it makes it easier and keep subtracting 24 as you go all the way around. And that pretty soon, this is what you're going to end up with is as this goes around. Now, like I said, all I did was just vary it. So the 15 has a round end there. The 14 has a round, has the square end there. Again, that's just simply here under style and under the end mark, just change it to be a square. Now animating it. Now, here we get back to our old friend Magic Move. If you have watched the advanced animation that I did before, you'll be very familiar with this. But this is where Keynote can do a ton of the work for something like this. So as we go through here again, I want to be able to select all of these. And what I want to be able to do is to go in up here again under Animate Transitions, pick Magic Move. Now, just like the basic one before, I need the duration here and the delay here to add up to one second so that again, every one second, the, the timer stays accurate. But what you can see is that since this is the same line, same number as we've seen in Magic Move before, whenever we do the preview, now you see that the number disappears and comes back as sort of the new one, but the hand moves really smoothly. So that's what happens, right? So now whenever there's Magic Move on all of these, it's just going through. It's sort of, you'll watch as it changes that from a diamond to a circle. It's a subtle thing, but again, it makes a nice little difference to be able to do that. And it's going to go through the whole thing. And then as we get to the end, as it goes down to zero, it'll flip and it'll say time's up. So all that that is, is just when I get down to here, this is a flip transition instead of the magic move. And we get here, no transition, so it stops. So again, pretty simple. Need a little bit of math to be able to do it. But now you get a really nice, elegant sort of timer with that moving hand. Well, if we want to you know, probably punch it up just a touch more, uh, yeah, let's maybe look at how we could do that next. Now, I know a lot of you actually have loved the advanced animation videos I've done and some of those sort of things. So let's take this intermediate version and, and you know, we're not going to do an advanced version, but I think, you know, we can probably push the visuals a little bit more. We can make it a little bit punchier and again, just with some real quick effort, be able to sort of, again, push it just one more step forward if we want to. Now, whenever I design anything, I always try to design it for the maximum impact. So let's tweak it just a little bit more like what I was saying. So instead of what we had, maybe if we did something like this, where there's a little bit more of a visual difference between this. And again, this is this is a super simple evolution of where we were, because all we're doing is just sort of the same way we did before. So let's go back to this original file. 
All I want is I want the white to be on every odd number, and on the even numbers, I want to be able to have a few things change. Well, all I'm doing is I'm just going in and I'm taking that outside circle, and again, I'm just changing it here so that it's a dash line. Uh, let's make the color a little bit darker so that that way it looks a little bit different. So now, as it goes through, since it's the same thing as I do the magic move and preview it here, Okay, that feels like that's a little bit different. Let's eh, let's push it a little bit more. Let's change the color, and we'll just use a preset. Eh, I don't like the orange. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now all I'm doing is just, again, using Magic Move to do that. So that's all that it's doing is just a little bit more of a visual difference. So even just this little tweak of taking that basic file, and again, let, let you know Keynote do the work for you. Just go through on every even one of these, or again, you can just copy and paste it if you want to. But that ability to be able to just sort of go through and to change the outside gets us back to this so that now we have something that has, again, it's still really smooth, still looks really nice, but it feels like there's a bit of a bigger transition between each one of those numbers so that, again, people are a little bit more aware of it. It adds just a little more drama and visual difference. And that's really it. Like I said, these are pretty simple to do. I know this version takes a tiny bit more time and a tiny bit more math, but for me, I think it's worth it because you end up with something that's so much more impactful. Well, that's it. There are those two different timers. Like I said, one, super simple, super easy. You can make it in two minutes. Another one takes a little bit more math, a little bit more work, but I think it's worth it just sort of the effect that you get out of it. Now, as always, if this is content that you really like, if it's something that you want to get more of, do me a favor. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you get the latest videos whenever I put those out. Also, if there's more of this stuff that you want, if there are other things that you'd love to be able to see me build or you want to figure out how to do, hey, look, put it down in the comments below. And I'm, I always go through those all the time, happy to make new videos if there are things in particular that you're really interested in, always ha happy to be able to do that. Now, as I promised at the top, you can all get also get these working files. So all you have to do is just head over to thecrazyone.com slash keynote. And what I'll do is you can download all three of these, that sort of beginning, beginner, intermediate, and sort of intermediate plus version of this. Be able to get that, see how it's done, and be able to sort of go through and make it for yourself. So, as always, hope you like this. Hope you found it useful. Keep an eye out for more of these in the future. And as always, stay crazy.